Boeing. We filled up the alarm for a uh, possible high angle drop. Calling engine 37. Looks to me like a case of origin, sir. Any witnesses? Two. However, the stories seem to contradict. So what's the evidence? Well, I think we got a receding moon, flux leakage in the magnetosphere, some missing salt in the oceans, and some unexpected erosion rates. Here's Dr. Hoven. He can explain it much better than I can. Dr. Hoven? Who's he? Dr. Hoven has his doctorate in education. He's great at explaining scientific principles. He taught science for 15 years and is an expert on this subject. So what's this all mean? I was a high school science teacher for 15 years. Now for the last 12 years, I've been traveling and speaking on creation, evolution, and dinosaurs. And I don't like anybody sneaking up on me, so I'm going to tell you exactly what I believe. So if you don't believe that way, you'll at least know where I'm coming from, OK? I believe the Bible is the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. I believe it from cover to cover. I even believe the cover on mine, it says Kent Hovind. I believe that. And in case you don't know, the Bible is your basic instructions before leaving Earth. You may want to read the book because you will be gone for a long time. <clears throat> One of my jobs as a Christian, and your job if you're a Christian, is to be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh us a reason of the hope that's in us. And I think in the last 200 years we have failed to give a decent answer to the evolutionists, and we've allowed them to take over our thinking process and our school system and our museums and everything else, and it's about time we put up a fight. See, folks, there's a war going on. Now, during wartime, if you're not going to shoot, at least carry bullets. Everybody can do something for the Lord. I've learned in my 32 years of being a Christian, everybody can do something. The worst of you could serve as bad examples, if nothing else, okay? <laughs> you could all do something for the Lord with your life. All right, this is not my wife. This is just a picture of her. <laughs> well, there's quite a difference, huh? We live in Pensacola, Florida. Been there 13 years now. We have three kids, one of each. <laughs> My kids at this time are 22, 23, and 24, a year and two weeks apart. It's called family planning where I come from. Uh, <laughs> See, son Eric got married two years ago, and son Ken Andrew got married one year ago, and we finally found someone to take over payments on my daughter, and she got married four weeks ago. <laughs> so there's the whole tribe right there. Anyway. Questions that man tries to answer in this life. These are called the great philosophical worldview questions. Every religion in the world tries to answer these four fundamental questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? when I die. The way you answer these questions is determined by the way you view the world. There are two ways to look at this world. Some people look at the world and say, wow, it's amazing. A big bang made this from nothing. That is called the humanist worldview. Other people look at the world and say, there's incredible design. There must be a designer. And that is called the creationist worldview. And these two worldviews are polar opposite. There is no compromise between the two. And they are at war with each other. Even people like Sir Arthur Keith, who believes in evolution, he said these two worldviews are at war with each other. Now, if the evolution theory is true, like the textbooks teach in school in your town and in my town, how would you answer the four great questions of life? Now, think about it. If evolution is true, who am I? Well, if evolution is true, you are nothing important. You're just a piece of protoplasm that washed up on the beach, and you're not worth a thing. Actually, you're part of the problem because you're one of the polluters of the environment. So the more of you we can get rid of, the better. See, that's normal thinking if evolution is true. Where did I come from? Well, if evolution is true, we all came from a cosmic burp about 20 billion years ago. Why are we here? What's the purpose of life? 
Well, if evolution is true, there's no purpose to life, so we might as well have fun. If it feels good, do it. Where am I going when I die? Well, if evolution is true, you go to the grave and you're going to get recycled into a worm or a plant. But the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Now, if that is true, that is going to put a very different set of answers to those questions. That means we better try to figure out who God is and find out what he wants and do what he says. But boy, the devil does not like that idea. The devil came to Eve in the Garden of Eden. He said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Question. Did you know the first sentence out of the devil's mouth was a question to make Eve doubt God's word? And he still does the same thing today, by the way. He wants you to doubt God's word. The second thing he said to the woman, he said, Ye shall not surely die. He's calling God a liar. He still does that today, too. And the third thing he said to, to Eve was, If you eat off that tree, ye shall be as gods. And right there is where the whole idea of evolution got started. It didn't start with Charlie Darwin. It started with Satan in the Garden of Eden. He wants you to think you can become like God. Yes, boys and girls, we started off like an amoeba, and we're evolving. We're getting bigger and better and stronger and smarter, and someday we're going to sail around the universe and discover new life forms like Star Trek. People ask me all the time, they say, Brother Hovind, do you think there's intelligent life on other planets? I say, no. I taught high school 15 years. There's not much intelligent life on this planet. <laughs> I didn't get to see a whole lot of it. Satan is a liar. He said, you can be like God. Boy, the Mormons have swallowed that lie hook, line, and sinker. They teach their people, if you're a good Mormon, you get to be God. And if you're a good Mormon wife, you get to go to heaven and be eternally pregnant, producing spirit babies. My wife don't want to go. She said, that's not heaven, honey. By the way, there are some great books to reach Mormons, and they make great Christians when you get them converted. Uh, I was really shocked to find out a couple of years ago that some of the major Catholic theologians of the past have taught man gets to become God. Now, the average Catholic has never heard of that and certainly doesn't believe it, but some of their leaders have taught that man gets to be God. Get the Catechism, page 116. Read it for yourself. This idea that man gets to be God started with the devil in the Garden of Eden. He's the one who wants to be God. Lucifer said in Isaiah chapter 16, chapter 14, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You see, the devil wants to be God, but the job is not available. So he's all upset about that, and he can't be God. So he's mad at God, but uh, he can't do anything to God, so he's mad at us because we are made in God's image. Did you ever wonder why the devil hates you so bad? It's because you remind him of God. And he couldn't hurt God, so he wanted to hurt God's creation. So he lied to Eve and told her she could be like God. Hitler said, if you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said they're more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. If you want to get someone to believe a lie, you have to do it like my two big brothers did to me. I have two older brothers. They've always been older than I am. They still are today, I believe. But uh, when I was about six years old, I was raised in East Peoria, Illinois. Are there any more Yankees in the crowd? Any other Yankees out there from Illinois or in Midwest? All right. How many Southerners do we have out there? Ooh, well, just remember who won, if you would. Uh, <laughs> but I was raised in East Peoria, Illinois. I was about six years old, and I came running into the breakfast table one morning, and I was the first one there for breakfast. And I got the last banana out of the bowl to put on my cereal. Well, a few minutes later, my two big brothers came in. They said, uh, hey, Kent, is that the last banana? I said, yep, and I got it. How many of you have an older brother or sister? You know that wonderful feeling you get when you finally pull one over on them? They pick on you all the time. Boy, that morning I had them and I knew it. They wanted my banana. But big brothers do not beg little brothers for anything. They either beat them up and take it away by brute force, or they lie to them and trick them out of it somehow. So my brothers said, hey, Kent, do you know how bananas are made? I said, no. I was only six years old. It's been proven in laboratory tests. The brain doesn't start to grow until kids are 18 to 20. <laughs> how many parents can verify that one from raising kids? Yeah. <clears throat> I said, no, how are bananas made? 
And they said, down in South America, they have these spiders that live up in the trees. And when they die, all their legs fold up and mold begins to grow on the dead spider legs. And a banana is actually made from moldy spider legs. I said, you guys are lying to me. You just want this banana because you know it's the last one. They said, no, brother, we're not lying. You cut that thing in half and look in the middle, you can still see the black spots where his legs were. <clears throat> I did not eat bananas for nearly three years after that. <laughs> they lied to me.